Okay, let's settle down now. You know where they hit. You know what you're doing. Let's go for a headshot on that target. Yes, sir. In a book of the German sniper advocates that all snipers in Germany in World War II could hit a man at 400 yards in the head. They used to brag about it. Remember, it was an 8mm rifle with a real shit f***ing scope compared to these space shuttle bitches. Hey gang, your favorite novice precision rifle shooter, James Reeves here. Last year, 2020, I took my first ever precision rifle course and that was the counter sniper class at Thunder Ranch. Some of you remember that video because I brought the Springfield Waypoint to run that class and I absolutely loved it. I love the class, I love the gun. Bear in mind that where I live in the south, there are almost no ranges longer than 100 yards. So not only do I have very limited experience with long distance shooting, but it's a little bit of a treat for me when I actually have the opportunity to shoot at anything further than a football field away. Fortunately, I was given that opportunity again this year. Daniel Defense offered to send me to Thunder Ranch again to take the counter sniper course if I agreed to use the new Delta 5 Pro chassis and give my honest opinion. I eagerly accepted the offer. Accordingly, the brand new Daniel Defense Delta 5 Pro chassis rifle in 6.5 Creedmoor showed up at my FFL only 48 hours before I packed up my shit and headed to Oregon. Shout out to Burris for sending me the optic that I use in this video, and thanks as usual to Ventura Munitions for sending me that half case of 6.5 Creedmoor that we put through this rifle in this class. Also, CGS, the silencer company, sent the Hyperion Titanium Silencer that I used. Stay tuned, gonna do a full review on that. As usual, let's start with what this gun is before we get to how this gun did. And we're going to keep it light. If you want to take a really deep dive on the Delta 5 Pro chassis, there is a 10 minute long interview between myself and that handsome man, Matt Hurt of Daniel Defense. Matt sat down with me at GunFest 2021. He and I went over the features of the Delta 5 Pro chassis in great detail. So for now, I'm going to hit the specs. Highlight some of the major features that most viewers are interested in, and if you want greater detail, go check out the video from GunFest. I'll drop a link here and in the description for that. Basically, the Delta 5 Pro chassis is a bolt-action precision rifle that uses a metal chassis system to house the barrel in the action. The chassis allows for mechanical bedding of the action with a metal-on-metal -metal design. It uses a cold hammer-forged heavy contour barrel from a proprietary steel blend with a Cerakote finish. Users can actually replace the barrel or change calibers with a couple of tools thanks to the proprietary barrel nut that it uses and no head spacings required. The barrel is threaded in the common 5.8x24 thread pitch and it features the well-liked Area 419 Hellfire muzzle brake. The action stainless steel and uses an integral recoil lug. The bolt is a three lug design with a 60 degree throw and a floating bolt head. It also has a threaded removable bolt knob. The trigger is the outstanding single stage Timney Elite Hunter adjustable trigger. The chassis has a Picatinny scope base and the chassis ahead of the scope base is scallop cut, meaning that you can mount larger optics at a lower height over the bore. And even if they have large objective lenses, they won't touch the chassis. The Pro has M-Lock attachments at six positions along the fore end, and it's got one at the bottom of the buttstock as well. There are a whopping 10 QD sling points on this gun. As you see here, the complete fore end of the chassis uses a full length ARCA rail system. It uses AR-15 grips and it has an ambi thumb rest. The Pro also uses a very adjustable buttstock, which can be set for length of pull and rise without tools. It also comes with a 10 round mag pull magazine in the common AICS short action pattern. You can get this rifle in 308 six millimeter Creedmoor or 65 Creedmoor in barrel lengths of 20 to 26 inches. Each gun will weigh around 11 pounds and will be about 2,500 bucks. So with the deets out of the way, let's get nasty and talk about performance. There are not many better places to test a precision rifle than at the Adam Brown range at Thunder Ranch, especially during a Thunder Ranch counter sniper course. Shooting is fast paced, tactically oriented, and it involves a variety of targets ranging from 100 to 700 yards. Most of the targets are five feet, eight inch tall men silhouettes 
Clint does this intentionally because the average height of any man on the planet is five foot eight, so it makes sense from a practical standpoint. So help me out here, what is the most important feature of a precision rifle? Could it be precision? Fortunately for the Delta V, precision and accuracy, strong suits. Daniel Defense calls the Pro the most accurate sub $2,500 rifle in the world, and they guarantee sub half MOA accuracy for any three shot group with production ammo. And as you see here, I put that to the test. With the very first six rounds out of the gun, I met and then exceeded that performance. First three shots with the Delta V Pro chassis at 100 yards. Those are the first three times I pulled the trigger. Here's the second. That's three rounds. Not bad. Not bad. Three holes all on top of each other, so perhaps a third of an inch or so. Pretty impressive. And please bear in mind that this was using off-the-shelf hunting ammo from Ventura Munitions. I was using, I think it's uh, Hornady American Whitetail. I mean like Walmart grade off-the-shelf ammo, not fancy match ammunition or anything like that. Also, those were literally the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth shots I had ever fired out of this gun. So we're just doing five. How about that shit? That was amazing. Now take a look at what happened when I shot the swinging gong set at 100 yards at a rapid pace as quickly as I could. The gongs get progressively smaller with the smallest, the last gong, is only two inches. So I set a GoPro right in front of the target so you could get a close up of what the pro did. Check this shit out. With the Delta V Pro chassis, I hit every gong dead center at a relatively quick pace, and I even managed to hit the two inch gong, even though it was kind of tilted about 45 degrees sideways. In addition to the man sized silhouette targets at each 100 yard increment from 100 to 700 yards, Thunder Ranch also has a series of targets positioned in and around vehicles a little bit further out than 200 yards. Jig, driver, pickup truck. All right, the pickup truck on the left. Yep. Come on. All right, you got driver. it. Driver. Things get kind of interesting when you're trying to thread a needle through two windows in order to hit a target that's like roughly the size of a person's head over 200 yards away on the other side of a car. This, of course, was not really much of a problem for the Delta V Pro chassis. Check out this sick slow-mo shot where I managed to accomplish exactly that. You also have a target set called the Four Horsemen, which are four standard torso silhouettes at about 250 yards. You can see here that Heidi Smith makes short work of the Four Horsemen in this clip. On. On. Nice. All the top. Yeah. No, the guy that's over here above to the right of the car. Now, I'm going out 700 yards, the one on top of that burn, the red guy. Okay, red guy on top of the burn. Okay, but we're going to take the guy on his stick. We're going to say hold center, pretty calm down there. Kind of a funny side note, I use cheap glass. I use the relatively inexpensive Burris RT25 Optic. It's 5 to 25x that costs less than $700. If I'm buying a $2,500 rifle, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna spend at least half as much on the glass as I spent on the rifle, but Burris insisted that I try out this RT25. While the RT25, of course, wouldn't be my number one choice for a high-end, expensive precision rifle, it performed very well and had relatively clear glass. I'm not gonna lie to you and say, oh man, this was the best optic I ever used. Performs just as well as optics, twice as expensive. But even then, for an optic that cost under $700, I was more than pleasantly surprised. And if that's your budget, I say go for it. At least check out this Burris optic. 
and I don't really have to say much more about it because the results that I got with the Delta V and the Burris combo kind of speaks for itself. So now back to the rifle, clearly performance was exemplary. By my recollection, I don't think I missed a single shot inside of 500 yards for the entire course. And part of that has to do with the fact that my spotter was none other than Clint Smith himself, who is a walking, living, breathing dope card. You just need to ask Clint, hey, what do I need to dial my scope into at any given range? And he'll tell you right off the top of his head, Mills or MOA. It's actually really funny. 400 yards, black pants, white shirt, 2.2 mils, eight minutes. Make an adjustment for your 6.5, what the f How many mils do you like, Clint? Schoolhouse, okay, on mills is 2.2. I've run 1.9. Like many of you out there, Clint refuses to acknowledge the superiority of 6.5 Creedmoor, or as he calls it, 6.5, what the f***? Since James informed me that you have to basically dial no dope with this awesome cartridge, right. I was just going to go with what he said. But I will say that I've used 6.5 Creedmoor in the past two counter sniper courses that I've run at Thunder Ranch, and I quite honestly will never buy a 308 again. Pro tip, next time you're on the line with a 308 shooter, guy just makes a hit, ask him what dope he dialed into his optic in order to make that hit. And if you're shooting 6.5 Creedmoor, use 10 to 15% less dope and you're going to make that hit. It's just so much flatter shooting than a 308. I really wanted to test out the accuracy of this gun, so I challenged Clint and Heidi Smith, a couple of the Thunder Ranch instructors, my good buddy Johnny B, and our ace cameraman and ace shooter, Ryan, to a little match. Everyone took turns shooting the pro, and whoever shot the best five-round group got a 100% off coupon for any belt from Blue Alpha. We just did a little Blue Alpha competition. Winner gets whatever they want from Blue Alpha, and as everyone probably expected this guy <laughs> <laughs> takes the cake i was right behind him though we'll show you the yeah, targets right i was right behind him well, i just remember people have never seen a group win a gunfight though okay it's awesome it's good fun but remember what the real reason we're doing this for is okay so it's all cool and i appreciate everybody and it's like none of that shit i want to get hit by even though it's a six five what the f no surprise clint wiped the floor with everyone but i am pretty proud of the fact that i was right behind him it's amazing what you can accomplish with a little bit of practice when you're training under one of the best instructors in the country. So you get the point. The gun was accurate, but why was it so accurate? Obviously, Daniel Defense has a reputation for their barrels. They're heavy profile, cold hammer forged barrels, free floated inside of a robust chassis system made by Daniel Defense. But Clint was calling the gun a battleship, and I think it was a pretty accurate description. The gun I'm using weighed over 11 pounds, and that's without shit on it. No optic, no sling, no ammo, no nothing. When you load this thing up, you've got a bipod on there, you've got your optic, you've got your rings, you've got your ammo, magazines. It's about 15 pounds wet. So if you're going prone or you're not moving very long distances, beautiful. Works perfectly. Really, it translates all that weight into low recoil, fast shooting, high stability. Now, on the other hand, those of you who may remember my Springfield Waypoint video from last year, you also remember that I hiked it to the top of the mountain out there at Thunder Ranch, and I didn't even really break a sweat. But then again, we're talking about two different guns with two different objectives in mind. The Featherweight Waypoint is more designed for the backcountry, while the Delta V Pro chassis is geared strictly towards competition and law enforcement shooters. I would say that either of these guns does a fantastic job excelling in their respective fields of expertise. You know what else helps with that accuracy? The outstanding Timney trigger. Timney is known as one of the greats for precision rifle triggers, and you can see for good reason. Literally, everyone who put their finger inside of that gun, including Clinton Heidi themselves, immediately made a comment as soon as they got off the gun to the effect of like, damn, that's a good trigger. Uh, the trigger, beautiful. This is a great trigger. Like everybody said, the trigger's nice. It's nice it has adjustment. Pretty much exactly two pounds and the trigger breaks like a meth pipe. 
Weight's adjustable from one and a half to four and a half pounds, but I was perfectly fine with that two pound trigger weight from the factory. Probably wouldn't screw with it. The stock's great. Loads of ways to customize it, to fit, you know, rise, length of pull, everything like that without tools. And ergonomically speaking, it seemed like it worked for just about everyone after they screwed with it for just a little bit. Speaking of furniture, I like the fact that the chassis uses standard AR-15 grips. You can tell I'm a novice because I don't do the whole weird thumb on the same side as the gun as the rest of your fingers thing because it just kind of freaks me out. But the Pro does have a thumb rest on either side specifically for that. For me, as someone who shoots an AR-15 more often, this was comfortable and familiar. I've seen some people complain about the AR-15 style grip that comes with the gun, and it seems that many advanced shooters would prefer to put something different on there. But the good news is, it's easy to do. It takes AR-15 grips, so no big deal, I guess. The Area 419 brake is universally praised. However, truth be told, I didn't fire one round from this gun with the brake because I was also evaluating the CGS Hyperion suppressor. Full video on that coming soon, but everybody seems to love the brake from all the reviews that I looked at. Fit and finish on the gun are outstanding, and frankly, I thought it was going to be more expensive than the $2,500 MSRP. I think it's more than worth it if you're looking for a turnkey option, like ready right out of the box. Checking some forums and some reviews, some people say that you can get a whole lot of precision rifle for $2,500, but the consensus also seems to be if you want something ready to run, you can just buy, throw some glass on it, and you're good to go. This is $2,500 well spent. As a group, we fired 500 rounds through this gun in one day, and we had no malfunctions of any type. We didn't clean it, so it seems, at least after 500 rounds, to be a pretty reliable rifle. I was impressed, but as with every TFB TV video, we're not going to get out of here without giving you some negatives. First one I just mentioned, price. If you're willing to thunk down 2,500 bucks and you want something where all you have to do is slap some glass on it and some rings and it'll shoot like a house on fire, this is your gun. On the other hand, if you're one of those guys that likes to tweak, customize, build your own, you can do something comparable and maybe save yourself a few bucks, but that seems like just about anything in the gun industry, I guess. My second negative is more subjective, so feel free to totally ignore it. I prefer light rifles. This gun is, scientifically speaking, heavy as piss. I already explained the upside of that, and that is that it doesn't even move when you shoot it, making it stable, therefore fast and accurate. But if you think you're going to transport this thing long distances, that's fine, as long as you don't need those other pesky luxuries like food or water. But then again, it's disingenuous for me to criticize this rifle like it's a backcountry gun when it's not designed at all for that purpose. So, the only real gripe I have is that the bolt throw is not as smooth as we would have liked, and it's also got a little bit of play at the end of the bolt travel. Is it awful? No. Did it affect performance? Doesn't seem like it, but it does feel weird when you get to the back of the rear portion of the travel and you get a little play. For a rifle as well done as this, it was not to be expected, and it was noticed by more than one shooter. The only issue that I have uh, because I like to run the bolt smoothly and quickly would be the bolt has a little give in it. Um, but overall, yeah, nice. But we started this video on a good note, so by God, we're going to finish this video on a good note. If you're looking for an out-of-the-box, ready-to-go precision rifle that's easy to shoot, extremely accurate, and needs virtually nothing other than glass, the Delta 5 Pro chassis is good to go for you. As you saw from this video, performance was outstanding in the tactical environment that this gun was designed for, and it shot better than half MOA three-shot groups, as promised, using cheap ammo. It was reliable, it was sturdy, it delivered. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Daniel Defense paid for my trip up to Thunder Ranch and for my tuition at Thunder Ranch, but all they asked for in exchange was a fair and honest review of the Delta 5 Pro chassis, and I think that's what you guys got. We don't accept money in exchange for positive reviews, and we're fortunate that we don't have to do that because we're supported on Subscribestar at subscribestar.com slash TFBTV and Patreon at patreon.com slash TFBTV. By the way, if you support us at the $5 or the $10 level on either Subscribestar or Patreon, you are automatically entered to win one of four free guns every single month. Automatically. Don't have to email me. Don't have to do anything. Just sign up at the $5 or the $10 level. 
check out our webpage if you want more details on that. But guys, we're just appreciative that you're watching. Thanks again. Take care.